Now that we have our finished controller, let's go ahead and program it so that we can use it to play games on our computer. So if you follow this link in the description, you'll find this page, the Arduino X input AVR library, and we can go ahead and copy this link right here. And if we go over to our Arduino IDE, we can go to Arduino IDE settings, and then click this button here, which will open up a list of additional boards manager URLs. And if we add a new line and paste this in, then it'll tell the Arduino IDE where it can find the information to communicate with this board in a slightly different way. So then if we go over to the boards manager, which is the second from the top option, we can search for X input and we'll see X input AVR boards, which we want to install. The next thing we need is another library, this time a standard program library that will tell our Arduino how to act like it's a controller. So this is the Arduino X input library, not the AVR boards library. And we'll just download this using the code download zip button the same way we would normally. And then we can go to sketch include library add.zip library and select the library we just downloaded. Once that's installed, we can add a couple of lines at the very top of our sketch and type hash include x input dot h. And now we're including all of that code so that our Arduino can act like a controller. The next step is in our setup function, we want to go ahead and set up the controller functionality. So the first thing we need to do is say x input dot set auto send false. And basically we're saying that we would not like the library to automatically send commands when we press a button. We want to manually send the commands over and that way we can register multiple button presses at the same time, which is important to reduce latency. Then we want to do x input dot begin to go ahead and start up the back and forth between the computer and the Arduino controller. Now, if you recall, when we set up the controller's PCB, we made each button connected to a digital port on one side and ground on the other. So when we press the button, it will be connected to ground and we'll register that on the Arduino. And that means that by default, all of the pins need to be pulled up, which is a fancy way of saying they need to be connected to the five volt pin on the Arduino through a resistor so that all of them register as on by default and only when they're pressed do the register as off. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pin mode zero comma input pull up and we're telling the Arduino, hey, we want you to make sure zero, one of the digital pins, is always on, except when the button is pressed, it'll actually be off, and that'll be something we can notice and register. Then we're just going to do the same exact thing for all of the other digital pins. So pins one through 10, 14, 15, and 16. So I've gone ahead and copied in a list of all of the button's names and then what port they're on. So for example, the left trigger is on port zero and the left button is on port one. And what we can do is after each of these lines, we're going to start with all of the standard buttons. For the left button, we can say x input dot set button. And then the button is button underscore LB. And then we'll say digital read on port one. So now we're telling the X input library, which will in turn tell the computer that the button LB is either pressed or not pressed, depending on what reading we're getting from port one. Now we want to flip this around so that it's the opposite reading, because remember when our buttons are down, they're off. And when our buttons are up, they're on. So we can put an exclamation point in front of that, which is saying not whatever the digital read on that port is. So if it's a one, it'll instead be passing a zero to the left button. And then we can do the same thing for the other standard buttons. So the back button, the right button, the B button, the A button, the Y button, the menu button, and the X button. And the only thing we need to change here is that the menu button is called the start button. So the name for it is button underscore start. Now on a normal controller, all the buttons are expected to be a zero or one value. However, the triggers are expected to be a value from zero to 255. But we don't have analog triggers, we just have digital triggers. So to fix that, we're just going to say X input dot set trigger. And for this top one, it's the trigger underscore left. And we're going to set it to the digital read port zero, since this is port zero, multiplied by 255. So now if it would be zero, it's still going to be zero. And if it would be one, it's all the way up to 255. Now remember, we also need to invert this. So I'm going to change this to negative 255. So now it's going to be minus 255 for pressed and zero for unpressed and then add 255. So if we walk through this, if it's a zero, it'll be zero times anything is still zero plus 255 is fully on. And if it's a one, it'll be one 
1 times negative 255 is minus 255. Add 255, it'll be 0. So now we've successfully inverted that, and we can do the exact same thing for the right trigger with trigger underscore right and digital read on port 7. Now the D-pad is still expecting standard digital input, but we can set the full D-pad at once by running x input dot set D-pad. And then for the first one, we'll do not digital read on port 3, then not digital read on port 5 for down, not digital read on port 4 for left, and lastly, not digital read on port 6 for right. And the last thing we need to do is set up the joysticks. So the joysticks are expecting a value from minus 32,768 to positive 32,767. But the joysticks that we're using only give us a value from 0 to 1,024. So back up in the setup function, before we run x input dot begin, we'll run x input dot set joystick range to 0 to 1023, so it'll automatically remap those values. Then in the loop function, we can simply run for the left joystick, x input dot set joystick, all caps, joy underscore left, comma, analog read on port A3, and then analog read on port A2. And of course, we can do the same thing for the right joystick, simply changing it to joy underscore right A1 and A0. And at the very bottom, we can simply run x input dot send to send all of the input that we're calculating in this section here over to the computer. And now we can go up to tools and change the board to x input avr boards arduino micro with x input and then we can go ahead and upload our code and with our controller connected we're able to see that all of the buttons and joysticks are working correctly now that your controller is finished check out this video right here to build another awesome project